This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Ah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Here we are at the mm, one o'clock block on a given Thursday, talking about Hawaii, the state of energy, but it's much more than that. Energy happens to be the contact point, the beginning of all good things with Maria Tomei. Oh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> Hi there. Nice to be here. And we have Taku Kimura. Now, he is the president of the Hawaii First Robotics. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Great yeah. to be here. I may have given away the topic. We're going to talk about first robotics. We're going to talk about middle schoolers, <clears throat> middle schoolers, thinking, thinking and building tech in Hawaii. That's the name. So you get the think and the tech. Think and, and the tech. Hawaii. Think. Oh, there you, you go. You thought about that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it's um, it's Hawaii First Robotics Lego League. Yeah. Wow, Sport. okay. And we're going to tackle this in, in, probably in more than one okay. show, but this is the beginning. This is a big explanation. So I guess the first thing is, what's a Lego? When I was a kid, a Lego was a little little plastic box. It was actually wooden. It was a little wooden block, and it fit together with other oh, blocks. My. That's yeah. as far as I got. Yeah. That was 1957. Mine were plastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it still is. You can still get the, wood, the, the plastic blocks, and yeah. they stack together, and you build stuff. And yeah. you figure out what you're going to build, and you make it happen. And so I'm an engineer, and Tak is an engineer. And a lot of the folks who first get into Legos um, have the appreciation of building, but it's much more. It's so much more. So well, what has so it become? How has it flowered out? Give us this, the state of the art, if you will. Well, you can see them for real at the district tournaments or at the state championship. Hawaii's having 10 district tournaments um, in November across the state. And the kids are taking not just the blocks, but actually a lot of the gears and the linkages and programming robots with motors. Lego's got robots and motors <laughs> okay. now to actually do missions on the field um, and to make the topic area come alive to them by doing these missions. They fix a broken pipe, they move things around, they have the rainwater and the dirty water, and they have to keep them separate. And you know, they're putting water where it belongs and keeping it away from where it doesn't. And this so, is much more than Legos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's not water. They're little translucent blue pieces uh, that are constructed to look like like water. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so that that's basically what Lego has gotten into. You can build stuff. You can do stuff. You can program a robot to move things. Um, to actually imagine that you're fixing the problems that Hawaii faces or the world faces. So, Taka, how much of what Maria said do you agree with? All of it. Um, I, I do want to add. The, um, the right answer is 110 <laughs> <laughs> percent. Um, one, one thing that I wanted to add, uh, these, these uh, Lego sets that we have, not only can they move, but there are sensors on, on these things too. So you can sense how far away an object is, or it, it can sense noise, it can sense um, direction. Um, color. Color, it can sense a light. Uh, wow. I mean, it's just a whole Megillah. Yeah, so that, that's how you do these uh, autonomous um, robots because, I mean, the, the robot has to kind of know where it's going and then see what's going on and then be able to do uh, their tasks with all those uh, the motors and, and attachments. Yeah, just a footnote to that, you know, that's really the, the incredible thing. We're talking about autonomous here for fourth graders through eighth graders. Yep. Autonomous? Could they spell that? Autonomous, and here they are competing with autonomous cars, autonomous drones, autonomous yep. robots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. That well, the, the that. real neat thing too is um, I have I have young kids, and nowadays I mean they're talking about programming in in kindergarten. So if you see like the the programming language for these robots, um, it's not you know what you and I might think of as as a programming language like you know actually typing in you know words and things on a screen. Um, there are like, these graphic blocks on drag the side. And drop kind and of And drag thing. and drop. I mean, there's like a move block, and you put that, you know, sure. there, and then say, okay, a weight block, and then um, a center block. And uh, you just kind of put these instructions in a row, and then you tell the robot to run this, you know, program that you've made. You know, to them, it's just like a, a set of... What fun. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, I want to just punctuate this by asking whether I can do it. I mean, am I, am I, don't I know. over the hill? Yeah, <laughs> because, I mean, it sounds like so much fun, I want to do it, too. I mean, Eventually, you, know, you could. In my yeah. spare time. Yeah. yeah, you might have to be, you know, instructed about five minutes or so, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like great fun yeah. for anybody. Yeah. But especially for kids, it probably really, what does it do to them? It opens their minds. What, 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 what kind of mental effect 
do you have when you expose a kid to robots? Well, actually, they build the robots themselves. So it's more, what effect does that robot have on everything else? <laughs> the kids make yeah, a great right. effect on their extending on their, their own yes, consciousness exactly. is what it is. What yeah. leverage? I know. It's the that most scary? incredible toy. It can have an effect on yes. other things. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So the tournament. Uh, I want to join the tournament. I may be a little old. I'm out of the eighth grade already. But you would, uh, you'd have to come in as a volunteer. Okay. Yes. So what's it like? What do I see there if I go down there? What happens? Well, it depends what you're, where you're assigned. So let's say that you're a referee. Ooh, that's scary. Referee. You could, you know. <laughs> okay, we need, yeah. anyway. Okay, right. So the well, folks who are watching the game. Footnotes all of that. We're talking about Legos, right? Yeah. First robotics. Yes. The sport of the mind. Right. The sport of the mind. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So each of these at the robot part. Now there are different parts of you know the event, but the robot where the robot is on the playing field and moving things around. That's two and a half minutes. And so as a referee, you'd be there and make sure everything's in place. And the students, two two out of the ten team members will be up at the table with the robot that they have built and they have programmed, and the attachments that they can put on the robot and take off the robot. Then when it says go, this robot goes off and starts doing things and you're watching to make sure that if they have to touch the lever in order to make that thing happen and meeting the, the specifications right, right. Yeah. yeah exactly and or you know if they touch if let's say the robot crashes into something and they have to go rescue it that they actually have a touch penalty so you, you set aside one of the little pieces that's set aside so you can keep track of how many penalties they, they might have incurred. And some of them do that as a strategy. So after two and a half minutes of intense concentration, lots of cheering, sometimes growth. So everybody's watching. Sometimes catastrophe, sometimes just so happy that something went so perfectly. Fun, yeah. So yeah. At the end of that, okay, then you have your scoring sheet and you go and you check off, okay, you get this many points, you know, the rope this is in that place and this is in that place. What do the winners all. get? All up. Well, they get a trip to some faraway place like so at the Washington D.C. Yeah. Some of the teams are selected to advance to the state championship, uh -huh. and so those, um, and then we have awards in different categories. You know, you have a, a robot performance award if your robot got more points than the other teams, and they have three tries. They go up and they do this match three times, each, each team, and so the highest score of all is the one that takes up the robot performance award. And then you've got core values award, and then you also have an award for the project. And we didn't talk about the project no, yet. No, we're gonna talk about the project. First I have but, to question. Right. <clears throat> this is lingering in my brain, gotta okay. sort of <laughs> flush out the cash. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> sensors, sensors. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of something that UH did uh, in the harbor. In the harbor, they made a, an autonomous uh, robotic uh, a small catamaran thing. Mm -hmm. It was loaded with sensors and it went everywhere and did it check the water, check the bottom, check the weather, I mean it checked everything and it reported back. Right. And it was it was a robot of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was in fact autonomous well I guess you could control it about where it went, but its its mission of sensing things that was pretty much automated. And it, and it opened my mind just about three, four years ago, it opened my mind to the notion that with sensors, which are always getting better, right, always getting better, um, you can do anything. So my question to you, Taka, is what's the most sophisticated sensor robotic you've seen in this competition? In this competition? Give us an example. Uh, there was one where the robot had to go and had to flip these um, Oh, the plates colors. around, yeah. yeah. And depending on what color was was facing, you would, it would either have to like look at it and sense like do I have to flip it around to the dark side or flip it or, or leave it like the way it is. And so the, you would have to program the robot to go look. And if if it was if it had to be flipped over, it had to you had to make a device that would actually flip this uh, disc over basically. And it would have to go to the next one, the next one, the next one. There were like four or five in a row, and I remember watching that, thinking, you know, what, the, the things that these kids are doing, I mean, the, the kids don't know if it's going to be like the color side or the black side on, you know, facing them. So the, the robot has to know that. All on its own. And it, and it, 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 it did it. And then, and then to figure out how to like flip this thing over, you know, it was, it was pretty amazing. And these are, you know, these are like fourth to eighth graders. Well, that's their strength, isn't it? They can think out of the box. Yeah, yeah. They have the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. They're just amazing. Yeah. And, and, yeah. But you know, it also excites their ability to think. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, we talk about robots doing autonomous things and sensors and all that. This is what we need now. This is going to be, I mean, it already is a world of robots. Mm -hmm. So it's totally relevant that these kids learn about robotics because uh, give it five or ten years, we're going to have robots doing everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they're right mm -hmm. in, they're going to they be marketable. When they hit the 12th grade, big bucks. I can't even imagine how <laughs> smart the engineers coming out of school are going to be, you know, when these kids go through engineering school and they hit the, 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 the workforce, I mean, they've been doing this since they've been in kindergarten. So, you know, they're just going to be leaps and bound, bounds over yeah. or anything that we can Does do. Does this change their lives? I mean, if we had one right here right now and we said to them, uh, you know, are you going to go into robotics and engineering and buildings, things like this, what would you say? Was well, she? they're probably thinking about it, Yeah. you know? And at that at that age, they know that they can go into almost you know almost anything. Yeah. So if they're enjoying the creative part and the engineering part, you know, they might very well. But the other part is it's not just for the kids who want to be engineers or think they want to be engineers, because you've got the project side and you've got this whole teamwork side. And if if you have a smart person who can put stuff together and make the device do what he what he wants. Is that enough? Or does he have to communicate? Does he have to get a team together? Sure. Do they have to coordinate? That's one sure. of the things is you've got one robot. You've got 10 kids on a team and one robot and a bunch of different missions, sometimes, what, 15 missions or something? Right. You've got to negotiate which, and you strategize, which missions do we do first? Which one, how long do they take? How can we put them in order? And sometimes the kids have to reprogram the thing they worked so hard on. They may need to rebuild that attachment that they've fallen in love with because with, it's such a perfect design. Yeah. But it has to work with the real world. It has to work with the other, uh, other parts of the system. And so the earlier they can learn that, I think the more flexible they become when they need to get into a real team where you have all these challenges and you have to tweak your design, you have to change your design, you have to change the whole strategy sometimes because it's just but not working. But then you're in the right. process, you're building you confidence. Know, it's all about right. confidence. So, so you know that you can try again. Failure, is it is it a bad thing or is it a step to learning? If you can learn from something that didn't work, you can eliminate that, yeah. you know, and come up with something better. But you might go back to that later to answer another challenge. So, uh, you know, I think that whole mindset, mm -hmm. the growth mindset, the integrating the learning and working with others and appreciating what others can bring to the project, you know, and so the project. Yeah. Okay. Before we talk about the project, I want to okay. see the I want to see the graphics. Oh, okay. First, you have okay. an organizational graphic you yeah. have to describe to us, and, and then I want to see the kids with all that vitality and confidence okay. that you're talking about. I want to okay. so the Hawaii, feel there. Yeah, so that graphic, um, I think, the there Hawaii First Robotics um, is an international program. I'll talk maybe. Yeah, I, I can talk a little bit about it. So, um, so first isn't, I mean, it's first and so number one. What does first stand for? First stands for for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. <laughs> it was uh, founded by Dean Kamen, who... Um, oh, I remember him with the... With Segway. The, the Segway, Segway guy. He came out here. He was here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I met him. Oh, great. Yeah, I met him. Yeah, so, so it was all started by him back in uh, 1989. Yeah. And um, so under first, there are, are a variety of, of competitions or programs, I guess. There's um, the graphic that just came up. Um, the, the lowest level would be junior. Uh, F First Lego League Junior, that's for kindergarten. Okay, so that, is that it? Okay, yeah. the green one. So kindergarten to, to fourth grade. Uh -huh. um, and that's where um, Maria kind of alluded to it, but every year there's like a challenge theme. This year it's hydrodynamics, so it's like water resources. So uh, the, the junior um, kids, the FLL junior kids, will make a, a model in, in the theme of that year. You know, it'll do something related to water resources. Because they get certain kinds of challenges in the other groups, the red and the, and the brown there, they get other kinds of challenges. Right, right? so yeah. first Lego League, which is that middle one for grades four, four to eight, um, they'll have to do a project in the theme of that year. So uh, this year's teams will think about ways to maybe purify water better or to store water more efficiently. Um, Wastewater. So yeah, so yeah, so there'll be that, there'll be a project that they have to think about and present to judges, and then they'll also have to make an, an autonomous robot to do missions on a mission board in so that every, theme. Everybody on the team have to present, because sometimes they're shy, you know. The whole team so has to. The whole team. Yeah, the whole everybody team goes has in to together and makes a presentation to. to At the, the end judges, of the day, nobody the is shy. 
<laughs> they might be shy, but they get over. They, they learn right. to yeah to get it's over. Part that. of the sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I got to say, I mean, this is one of the things that really uh, sets, to me, sets the the first program apart from other robotics programs because a lot of times the, the other robotics programs um, concentrate on on robotics, but then what first does is it um, promotes. Well, they have a thing called gracious professionalism. And I'll, I'll read this off because I know I wouldn't do it justice in, unless okay. I read it. But gracious professionalism is a part of the ethos of FIRST. It is a way of doing things that encourages high quality work, emphasizes value of others, and respects individuals and their community. So in the long run, gracious professionalism is part of pursuing a meaningful life, one that can add to society and enjoy the satisfaction of knowing one's act uh, with integrity and sensitivity. So that uh, on graphic number three shows the three parts. You see that again, graphic the, number three? Yeah. Well, okay. that's two. Uh, so that's the, two, the, the okay. Graphic number three is, number a, the, three is a triangle, and it shows robotics. The triangle, if we can find it. Ah, uh, no. Nope, Maybe that's not. Coming okay. soon. We'll, okay. we'll describe it verbally. Yeah. We need to be flexible. Yes, we, yes, <laughs> yeah. we do. Yep. Resilient. So the will. core values is what um, yeah. Marco was talking about. Yeah, so there's a series of core values that, that FIRST has. So the first one is we are a team. Mm -hmm. We do work to find solutions with guidance from our coaches and mentors. We know our coaches and mentors do not have all the answers, and we learn together. Uh, we honor the spirit of friendly competition good sportsmanship, basically. Uh, what we discover is more important than what we win, which is a really uh, important point for uh, FIRST. We share our experiences with others, and we display gracious professionalism and cooperation in everything that we do, and we have fun. Wow, and I'll tell you one other you didn't mention. At about halfway through the show, we take a break. We can do that now. <laughs> All right. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. My friend, Mother, what big eyes you have. She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. That's a wolf. What are you doing? OK, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Push. Uh, This is over. You're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Bingo, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to bring some kids down. All right. That'd be we're great. Gonna, we're going to show them around. We're going to show them all our technology. We're going to show them all the electronics we can in the thought that they might be able to use that when they set up these robotics. Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to go back to the point about um, uh, the concept, yeah. the problem, the solution. Yeah. This is really yeah. important. How do you set that up, Maria? Well, I think, you know, he was talking about what he loves about the, the program. The project piece of it is an opportunity to show the kids, um, hey, this is what's happening in the real world. Your community in this topic, it's, this year it's water. Water, right. But I, it, used to, it was energy in 2007, which is when I got involved originally. <laughs> so, you know, they have all these, every year is a different topic. So this year they're looking at how does Hawaii find and transport and treat and dispose of and use water and how can we do it better so they have to imagine themselves wow. inventing not not just a technology but wow. sometimes it's a law sometimes it's a public information campaign it's some way to deal with whatever problem they have identified and they care about and so not this, only are they year, imagining themselves doing this, yeah. they actually sometimes are pursuing that and they're getting involved in the real issues in society that at this grade, fourth through eighth 
you know, do we usually expect the kids to get knowledgeable about a topic, do research on how it could be better, and propose a solution? It's very empowering to them, very exciting to them and their teachers and their mentors. It should be. It's, yeah. it's, it's a yeah. big, big, big issue, and yeah. lots of things are happening. And I wonder, I mean, for example, I, 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 this is really important, yeah? For example, there's a guy named Don Thomas in Soweston University. Yeah, yeah, you must yeah, know him, yeah, right? Yeah. He's been working with geothermal, <laughs> yep. but he's also, incidentally, been working with water. And he made this fabulous discovery, okay, in the saddle between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. He found out the water table was much higher, and there was lots more fresh water there because of the topography. This was not discovered when they did the last top topographical survey in 1940 or so. Yeah, yeah. He discovered it within the last year or two, okay? And we actually actually have much more fresh water, not only on the big island in the saddle, but on all the islands because of discoveries he has made regarding the, the strata of the topography, okay? Cool. So if you're talking with kids yep. about a project yeah. involving water, they should know about this, right? They should sort of build this in. Will they know, will they care about what Don Thomas is doing? Wow. Well, you know there are a bunch of teams on the big, he's, is he on the big island or Oahu? Both. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because the teams are looking for mentors in, you know, in the community that they can go talk to, check their ideas, get ideas from them. What are the issues? What are the um, problems? What are some solutions? And then when they come up with a solution, to actually go take it to the experts and say, hey, what do you think? Yeah. That's Why would he love to oh, talk to yeah. them? Would they love to we'll talk get, to him? They yeah, would, yeah. Yeah, so we can send his contact info to the coaches and say, hey, guys. So this could happen. Yeah. They could yeah, actually yeah. connect with you know, cutting edge stuff email, right now. It can be Skype. Yeah. It can be in person. Yeah. You know, if, if he's um, interested in maybe serving as a judge for... Well, he might be. You know, Scientist. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've got a tournament on the Big Island. We've got a bunch of tournaments on Oahu. Yeah, I don't yeah. It would be great. If yeah, gonna, anyway. You know, yeah. Also, you know, San Diego just got finished spending $10 million on desalinization. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, the jury's out uh, as to whether we need that here. But assuming we... Mm -hmm. We wreck our water supply and the lens, you know, lens, you guys are engineers mm, yeah, of the lens, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you know, because of environmental violations of one kind or another, uh, you know, then maybe those kids should learn about desalinization too, about the process, sure. yeah. uh, the cost, the entrepreneurial aspects yeah, of the, yeah. the economics of it, right? Mm -hmm. So you could also factor that into the solution, the problem and the solution yeah, for yep. them. So that's really cutting edge current stuff. It is. Yeah. It is. Boy. And, yep. Fabulous. So I knew you'd like this. I do. <laughs> so tell us about some of the other topics that have been chosen and tell us who between the two of you, Maria and, and Taka, uh, has been choosing these topics. Oh, we don't. This is an international oh. program. Oh. The Some guy in Nat Norway? No, no, in no, probably in New Hampshire. I think Hampshire, is where they're yeah. they're based. But oh, we have every, Dean Kamen. Yeah, we have, he lives there. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's probably why it's based there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, every year there's a there's a big uh, reveal in September, and and that's when they announce what the the, the challenge of that year is going to be. So um, we don't we don't know. We, I mean, we don't know what it's going to be until they they announce it. Well, it's, so it's the yeah. same everywhere. Yep. Yeah, but it's worldwide. not the same for all the three groups that we saw on the chart. It'll be different for those three groups. Um, it'll be related. Like the junior folks will do something water related uh, this year as well. Uh -huh. um, but not necessarily exactly the same. Um, well, yeah, or all the, the groups. Topic is the same. But the, 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 the general topic is the same. But the solutions they're seeking may be different. And the solutions they find certainly will oh, be yeah. different. Oh, yeah. So you asked what the topics have been. Yeah. So yeah. I, I got involved in 2007, which is about halfway. It started in 1999. But in 2007 was Power Puzzle, which is all about energy. So that's when okay. I got started. Right. And, um, I don't know what year you, you uh, first. Smart Moves. Oh, is, 2009. Uh, transportation. Yep. yep. So between 2007 and 2009 was 2008. Climate Connections, Global Climate Change. In um, 2010, it was about biomedical engineering, body forward. 2011 was food factor, preventing foodborne illness. Yeah, and um, 2012, senior solutions, assisting the elderly. 
you know, what, what are their challenges? Oh, sure. What can we do? Yeah, that was very interesting. These are all great 2013, topics. nature's fury, natural disasters. How do you make your city, cities more resilient? How do you recover from natural disasters? Talk about a topical thing now. So the kids who went through that are probably even more understanding of what, what some folks are facing these days. 2014, world class, improving the teaching process. Now that was very close to home for everybody involved. Hey, how can we? We all had opinions you? about that. Yeah. yeah. How do people learn? How do you communicate that? You know, and how do you improve that using technology? Using different. Um, understanding of the brain, understanding of development. It, it was great. Um, 2015, trash trek, management of solid waste. You know, in that one, I remember some team actually talking about implementing solutions. They did a whole recycling thing with the plastic forks at their school, you know, and, or, you know, bring your own utensils. You know, it actually kind of the whole school stopped using as much plastic <laughs> through the effort of this team of 10 kids. Yeah. Um, Animal Allies was 2016, Animal People Interactions, and 2017 Hydrodynamics, Water. So the Lego part is only one possible solution to the problem you are assigning them, am I right? Well, it's a different You don't necessarily part. have to have, oh. uh, or do you, Lego and The and, team and has robotics. to do all three parts of it. The three parts are? Well, the robotics piece, which is the Legos, the okay. Lego Mindstorms right. robot, and the you, you build the pieces out of Legos right. on this four foot by eight foot playing field. Okay, that that's a required big. part. You really got to be yeah. efficient. And project is right. one part of it, and then the core values. They actually have a teamwork exercise and and whatnot. And then there's an extra bit focusing on the design of their robots and attachments and stuff. So on the competition day, what people can see is the robots on the four foot by eight foot field um, trying the different missions and getting points. The other stuff is in small groups with professionals and other community members as their judges on the teamwork, robot design, and project. So every team has to do all of those parts. And those are interviews, those three parts. So the team will go in without their coaches. Adults aren't allowed in there, except <laughs> for the judges. So it's just a team and like three judges. And they'll have to do a presentation on either core values, how they work together as a team, uh, their project, like what their innovative solution is and why it should be implemented, or how they designed and executed their robot. They do it all on their own. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, what is what are the parameters for winning? I mean, what are the what do you have to do to win? You have to. Well, each one has a score, and so um, we'll put that in a spreadsheet, and you calculate um, the score. And the judges score it numerically. Right. Um, they'll, they'll do it by rankings, um, and then um, certain, you know, you'll, you'll get uh, more points for being higher up, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so they'll, they'll average the three together, and the, the team with the best average score uh, will win. You know, I love the notion that the, these are the, 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 the areas of inquiry you read out. Those problems, those projects are really totally current. We could use solutions, but even if these kids don't come up with solutions right now today in November, mm -hmm. um, they're oriented toward finding solutions, and these problems are not going to be resolved overnight. So they, we're building, what do you call it, scientific citizens, engineering citizens, yep. whatever, mm -hmm. uh, who will solve the problems of the future. We need them bad. Oh, yeah. So my question is why, you, you named about a thousand kids are involved. In Hawaii. In Hawaii, statewide. Why, are, why isn't every single kid in every single school, starting fourth grade, uh, involved in this program? A lot of it is um, coaching and just, it, it takes a lot of work. On the part <laughs> to of coach. the coaches. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that, 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 that's a difficulty because I know a lot of schools would love to have more kids involved, but then they might have only a couple of teachers who are willing to do that. Uh, it's a lot of time for the parents too. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of practice time. Um, How can I get to be a coach? You want to be Ooh, one? We can, yeah. we can make you a coach right now. <laughs> write my name down. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Yeah. We're always looking for coaches. Or mentors. Uh, now, in March, you know, the uh, Hawaii Academy of Science conducts its, uh, what do you call it, science That's fair at yeah. the convention center. And they got 700 applicants, usually from the statewide, to come and present their poster boards and their projects and all this, and, and defend their projects, mm -hmm. which is an important part of it. What's, what's the comparison? Can I be in both? 
Sure. Should I yeah. be in both? Oh, yeah. A lot of kids are. I mean, a lot of those kids who do uh, Lego League, because the Lego League, the the uh, state tournament is in December. Mm -hmm. So usually you can just do that whole thing, and it's done in December, so and then after that you can do your one in the fall, one in the spring. Yeah. Yep. Have my whole year occupied by science. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're about out of time, so I, I'd like I'd like to ask you guys to do two separate things. Okay. First, you, Maria. I'd like you to address the parents of these kids and tell them what they should know and think about, what they should ideate about in terms of dealing with and being involved, having their kids involved in this program. Thank you for supporting, because the parents are supporting just as much as you know all of those of us who are setting things up, because the parents do volunteering. You know, they bring, they bring the, the kids, and they support the coaches, and they bring the snacks and everything else. And they really do contribute a lot. And then we ask them to serve as volunteers. So very often, you've got the judges, the judges and the referees and the folks at the events. You know, it takes like 50 people to just show up on that day to be directing the traffic and registering people and you know delivering things where they need to be delivered and keeping score and so they really put in a lot of time too so thank you for supporting the programs and supporting the teachers and the coaches and your kids and contributing whatever needs to be contributed to this program you are so enthusiastic how do you really feel? <laughs> oh, sorry. It's terrible. Too much work. <laughs> Taka, yes. could you address some remarks to the kids, the kids in the program and the kids who could come into the program? Why is it in their interest to do so? Well, first of all, it's fun. I mean, you know, that, that last core value, we have fun, and it is. Um, you know, my, my daughters have done it, and, and they love doing it. They, um, they make really good friends through the process. and then. Before they know it, they've learned something. But you know, it's it's a uh, you know, what's there not to love about playing with Legos and 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 doing these these things on the uh, the game board? I mean, it's a uh, it's a it's a great experience. Um, you get to meet all sorts of people, even from other schools. Uh, if you win, you might get to go to Worlds and 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 compete against people from all over the world, and meet all sorts of different yeah. people. So it's just a it's just a great program, and I can't say enough about it. Our kids are our most important asset. We've got to build them to do this. Yep. They've got to take care of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Taka. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. Thank, Thank you. you. Aloha.